Does this look right to you? Take a second. It seems wrong, but it's 100% correct. If you said it was wrong, don't feel bad. You probably thought something along these lines. We sub in with A, then sub in with F. The right is 45 and the left is 40. So the inequality is wrong. And that's all true if you're in algebra class. But this is hexadecimal, also called base 16. What's going on with 4A isn't multiplication of a variable at all. It's something more like this. Now, this should be simple. Actually, you learned everything you need to know to understand this in first grade, if not sooner. But you may still be scratching your head. Why is this hard when it should be easy? I'll tell you why, and we'll make it easy. And of course, we'll learn exactly how hexadecimal works and why 4a is definitely bigger than 3f. Let's get started. So I just said a is not a variable subbed in. What is it then? It's actually just a different way to write 10. What do I mean by that? Well, what is 10 really? This is 10 really. It's 10 units, 10 things. Here, 10 colorful cubes. It's an idea that's independent of how you write it down. See, we're used to writing it this way, but you could think of other ways to write it. If you were in ancient Rome, how would you write it? Like this. If you were counting things out one by one, marking them as you go, you might write 10 down this way. And in hexadecimal, we write it like this. A. Why A? Well, why not? It's already on the keyboard and we know it already. Why complicate things with a new symbol? To write 9, it's the same as what we're used to. But what if I take 10, or A, and add one more to it? Then it's B. Add one more to that, 12 now if you're counting, and we get C. Then D, then E, then F, then G. Er, actually no, we don't get G. We stop at F. Why? Because we have enough different symbols now to make a base 16 number system, which is what hexadecimal is. Our normal numbers are called decimal, or base 10, and they've got 10 symbols, 0 to 9. The 6 symbols from A to F plus the 0 to 9 we already have give us 16 total. But oh, why 16? Why not 17? Why not 109? Basically, with 16 possible values, each hex digit maps exactly to four digits of binary. This lets me write down the exact binary values inside a computer in a shorter, more convenient form. But to explain that in detail, I need another video. So let's move on. If I can't write G for 16 little cubes, what can I write? Let's just make them into one long stick and write it this way. What? Isn't that a 10? Not really. Not in this context. A 1 and then a 0 in normal numbers, that is, in base 10, means we have one stick of 10 and 0 little cubes besides that. In base 16, this just means we have one stick of 16. This is the same place value concept that you learned as a child, just with 16 cubes per stick rather than 10. Now that we know that, we can look at exactly why 4a is bigger than 3f. So if I have two sticks, I'd write it like this. What's that equal to in base 10? Well, count up the cubes. Each stick is 16, so we've got 32. Then I can go up to three sticks and four sticks. If I have 10 little cubes besides that, could I add a stick of 10? No, sticks of 10 belong in base 10. Hexadecimal is base 16. Let's add 10 little cubes. We don't have enough to make a full stick. And how do we write this number of cubes in hexadecimal? That's right, it's A. So this total number of cubes you see, this is what 4A really means. What would 3F look like? Pause the video and visualize it if you'd like. But it means we have three sticks of 16 and 15 little cubes besides that. Now which one's bigger here? You don't need to multiply anything to know the answer to that. We have four sticks on this side. And four sticks is bigger than three sticks plus some number of extra cubes that weren't enough to make a full stick. The left side's clearly bigger, so 4a is greater than 3f. Now some of you might be thinking, okay, I see that. But how much is 4a really? Well, 4a is 4a, just like 2 is 2 or 7 is 7. What? That's not the answer you wanted? Okay, fine. What you really want to know is... How much is 4a in the number system that I'm used to? So let's convert 4a into our normal numbers, that is, into base 10. 
One way to do that would be to count the cubes one by one. Every single one of them. Sound like fun? No? Okay, we won't do it that way. So remember that this 4 isn't representing multiplication by A. It's representing how many of these long sticks we have. The sticks are 16 each. So to know how much that 4 is really worth, we multiply 4 by 16, which will be 64. Then recall that A is just how we write 10, so we'll add in 10. And that's it, it's 74. If this is starting to make sense to you, click subscribe. I'm Code Slate. My clear explanations and colorful visualizations make hard concepts easy. So click subscribe. I appreciate it. So I added the little 10 here to show that it's base 10. Since sometimes base 10 and base 16 numbers, that is hexadecimal, can look the same. We can also add a little 16 for base 16 when it's unclear. So we just did 4a. What was 3f then? It's your turn to try. I'll leave the sticks and cubes up to help you out. Got it? Good. Before finishing the video, let's look at two other questions that can give people trouble. For the first problem here, your first instinct is probably just to write down 100. And your first instinct would be 100% wrong. For the second problem, a lot of people will choose BF quickly. That's wrong too. Our intuitions lead us astray here. Our gut reactions are wrong. Why? In short, our previous learning experiences, which normally help us learn new things better, have the opposite effect here. We're so used to seeing 100 coming after 99 and letters meaning variables that we jump to the wrong conclusion in both cases. So how can we deal with this? Let's examine this second question more closely. Here, your math intuitions can still help you. In fact, using the right intuitions makes this problem much easier. To see this, have a look at this question, which is in base 10. In less than a second, we all know the answer. 81's bigger. But how can we answer so fast and with such confidence? It's because we're comparing 8 and 7, the digits in the most significant place. We all learn to do this at a young age. This 8 really means 8 sticks of 10. And 8 sticks of 10 is always going to be bigger than 7 sticks plus some number of cubes that weren't enough to make a full stick. But what if this was hex? Could these two numbers be hex? Sure, let's add a little 16 to be clear. Now this just means 8 sticks of 16 plus 1 extra cube. Does the same logic still work? Of course. 8 sticks of 16 are always going to be bigger than 7 sticks plus some number of extra cubes that weren't enough to make a full stick. Let's have a second look at this question. Recall that C is 12, B is 11. Is it C times 2? No, it's C sticks of 16, that is 12 sticks of 16, plus 2 extra cubes. And similarly for B, as long as you know that C is bigger than B, you can tell at a glance and with full confidence that C2 is bigger. And you could use the same concept to solve our original question in less than a second. So I hope this question looks different to you now. In this video, we took some wrong intuitions about hexadecimal numbers and replaced them with right ones. And we learned the basics of how hexadecimal works and how to convert a hex number into our normal numbers. If you have other questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. And there's still one unanswered question from the video. I'll leave this up as a challenge for you. Thank you.